All right, next up, we are going to talk about comments made by Method Man uh, in re- with respect to mental health. So uh, Fat Joe was given a talk show on Stars. Uh, the name <laughs> of the show is called Fat Joe Talks. So it's a hell of go. a creative name, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, but the name of the show is called Fat Joe Talks. And on the first episode of Fat Joe Talks, uh, Method Man was a guest, and they got into – talking about uh you know mental health situations and depression and how they cope and deal with that so this says method man opens up about lifelong battle with depression it never really goes away rapper turned actor method man born clifford smith is opening up about his lifelong battle with depression claiming it never really goes away while recently speaking with rapper fat joe on his new star series fat joe talks Method Man got real about mental health and much more. Starting off the segment, the two talked about the gut feeling you get when someone crosses your mind and you think to check up on them. Uh, So I'm going to actually skip through this because I'm going to actually play the clips. Um, Fat Joe continued to reflect on his own experience with depression, recalling how he was in a dark space when he cumulatively lost his sister, grandfather, and fellow rapper Big Pun. Method Man offered his compassion and said, I can only imagine. Fat Joe added, I was like two years straight going to therapists. Method Man asked him if he was aggressive towards others like he was during his bouts, but he replied, nah, but I went through it, through it. I never tried to kill myself or thought about it, but I was sleeping in the bathtub with no water running, looking up at the ceiling. I went to a therapist and it took me two years of beating myself up. So I tell people, you can be in a gang, you can be in anything. And if somebody tries to off you, you can move to another state. But when you're fighting your fight, but when you're fighting, you're fighting your own brain. It's with you all the time. Method Man agree, agreed and went on to explain how hard it is to cope when you start crying out for help and people look at it as a facade or don't know how to help. So here is a bit of that exchange between these two guys. The point I'm trying to make is every now and then you get a thought about, damn, I wonder what this person is doing. Act on it. Call them. Yeah. See how they're doing. Or just find some way to get in contact with them. It never hurts. You have no idea how much that could mean to them. Because, you know, I, I go through these bouts with certain shit. And yeah. Do you the, still go through that? Yeah. You, it never really goes away. It never really goes away. You have, like I said, I have bouts with it and things. And Dave saw that. And like, and he just sent me a text message. Beautiful text message. Just I want love. Yeah. And it was like he it spoke to me big time. And all I could put was all of this with a heart emoji. And I don't even give heart emojis, son. But yeah. It felt good to know that somebody's thinking about you or your right. well-being or your health. You know, I went through depression after my sister died, pun died, my grandfather. I can only the same imagine. Time. I can only imagine. So I was like two years straight going to therapists and it could be a sunny day, the shit right. looked dark outside. And what I try to tell people. All right, I think there might be a little more. I won't play the whole thing. People is with was me. it an aggressive type of Ooh, uh, depression? No, I went through it. Through yeah, it. like I never tried to kill myself. I never even thought about no, that. I mean, aggressive towards the ones. Yeah, I was. I was aggressive nah, I was just sleeping. I was sleeping in the bathtub with no water running. Wow. Yeah. Looking up yeah. at the ceiling, yeah. and I went to a therapist, and it took me two years uh, of beating myself up. And so I tell people, you could be in a gang, you could be in anything. Somebody trying to kill you, just move to another move to state. Another state, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But when you fighting your own brain, it's with you all the time. So you go to the island, you could be in the Fiji island with the bluest water, but you're still fighting that demon. You are, you are. But the illest one is when you do these displays as a, a cry for help and people some see it and just feel like it's a facade or I don't know how they take it, but there's a lot of times those people don't get help. I mean, in the bathtub, that's. Oh, no, that- no. All right. So that that's pretty much the gist of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, both of these guys respectively went through some dark times and lamented seeking out professional help, going to see a therapist to help them get through it all. So right. Right. Um, I, I think we're still in a place in society where Therapy is, well, I, I think it's becoming more, mm-hmm. um, I think it's becoming more of a consideration that people are taking seriously earlier on during their bouts with mental health challenges. 
But I still think that for a lot of people, something like this is a last resort. Uh, speaking in terms of like seeking out hair, uh, help in that regard, going to therapy. And these are two guys, two machismo guys in the rap game who uh, both lament their struggles with this stuff and how they needed that help and they needed that support system and they needed the, the therapy from that. So uh, what did you make of that, that exchange there uh, between these uh, Method Man and Joey Crack? Friend of the channel, I would say. You talked about <laughs> Joey Crack. Joey Crack is a friend of the channel. Yeah, honestly, man, I was I was a little bit surprised to to hear both of them speak that way. You know, I thought it was just going to be Meth talking that, you know, because I you know saw the article title. But I, so I thought it was just going to be Method Man talking that. But, uh, you know, when Fat Joe chimed in with it, and I'm like, oh, look at these guys. And like you said, two machismos, man, really Fat Joe, for that matter, who, you know, who was a friend of the channel for a reason, because he's always <laughs> talking cash money. <laughs> I mean, he's always talking cash money. He's always talking like he's the biggest, baddest man around. And, and you know, so my takeaway for this, you know, outside of, you know, get help if you need it. <laughs> Honestly, I think a lot of people need help. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know, my takeaway from this is <clears throat> for people out there that think that these entertainers got it all together. And a lot of people, a lot of people take the facade that these people present, whether they're on their IG pages, whether they're in a music video, whether they're in a TV show like Method Man, you know, and they take all of these characters and they just think that, you know, and they're pretty sure that these guys are getting a good check for it. Every time you see them, they're in a nice car, you know, and everybody thinks that they got it all together. But, uh, you know, for them to say that, hey, man, I got dark moments. And that was powerful what uh, Fat Joe said. That, hey, man, I'm in Fiji, man. That water crystal blue and I'm still going through it. And um, yeah, man, that's real stuff. So. For all those people out there that love to compare and contrast, love to look at people on Instagram and compare their lives and not even celebrities, just everyday people, you know, and compare themselves to these people just because they're an influencer and they got that car for free or they're only driving it around for their for their page, you know, and you think that they got it all popping and they don't. And honestly, man, if you're living in the hells of North America, man, um, you know, you've been exposed to all kinds of stimuli that will put you in a dark place. When, um, you know, I got my, yeah, you know, for, for David Banner out there, <laughs> you know, I got, my, I got my degree in psychology. OK. All right. So while I was taking my psychology courses and I'm sitting there. Um, you know, hearing this stuff from the professor, and I'm like, yo, I do some of this. You know, we're going, we're going through the DSM and we're going through all of these uh things that you know people get, you know, baker acted for. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, hey man, I low-key do that. And everybody in class was like that. And then she, so <clears throat> the professor had to stop everybody and go, hey, hey, all right, relax. All right. There's, you know, everybody do a little bit of some of these things, okay? But it's for the extreme cases of these, you know, there's a spectrum, but this is for the extreme people on a spectrum where it's affecting their lives and everybody else's life around, life around them. So it's good that you guys are picking up that you have some of these things, all right? So try working on it, you know? And as I'm going through these courses and I'm learning about these various disorders, I'm learning how the brain works and how people thought patterns can go left at one event when they were eight years old. You know, I, I, I was like, wait, why am I learning this in my, in my, you know, my like major in college? I wasn't even learning this in my first two years in college. They, this was, this was, this was gated until I actually got into my major. I was like, people need to learn this in elementary school on how their brain works and how their brain can go left. And how they need to, you know, various coping strategies, you know. And so these things are not taught. And there's a lot of people going through trauma all the time. All right. So uh, there's a lot of hurt people out there. And they're just in the world making decisions. You're interacting with them. I'm interacting. They're on the Internet. Trust me, if you read a comment section anywhere, 
All right. Yes, he does a lot of hurt people in the world. All right. So um, so for these guys to be out here talking about it instead of, you know, banging on their chest and hollering at their, uh, you know, um, Superman walking. All right. Uh, for them to actually open up and say that, hey, man, I actually went through some struggles. Hopefully some other brothers out here or anybody else that's watching uh, could see it and like, hey, man, you know what? Maybe I got to get myself together. Maybe I should, you know, go see somebody because I ain't been right. You know, you know, Fat Joe was sleeping in the bathtub. You know, I, w- I was sleeping in the car or whatever. You know, maybe I need that. And it's like, yeah, man, maybe you do. So uh, <laughs> most likely you do. And that's not an indictment to anybody. That's just because everybody's gone through something. And so when you go through something, you're going to need help to get up out of that. And you could have went through something 13 years ago and it's still knocking at your door. So there's ways that, you know, you you can get rid of that, if you will. So, um, but yeah, what are your thoughts, man, on uh, Method Man, Fat Joe, talking about some deep stuff, mental health, man. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a good thing that they come from a, generation that they come from where you know um they still seek out interpersonal face-to-face communication and human contact and they don't use the internet as their therapist not to say that there aren't people their age who don't use the internet <laughs> right as their therapist, because there are but 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 i think that the general you know if there was a diaspora for people who seek out unofficial help versus official help Mm. it'll look like you know certain certain generations have a higher likelihood to kind of you you know uh, seek out self-help you know via a therapy mode on online and things of that nature um like the uh comparison truly is the thief of joy and I think one of the unintended consequences of social media specifically, but the internet in general, is that it has cultivated in an it has cultivated an environment in which the general decline and deteriorations of people's general men, general mental state has become exacerbated. Uh, I think it's an unintended consequence of social media, meaning when these people were creating these apps, when they were creating Facebook and Instagram and all of this other stuff, they general they genuinely thought that they were creating something that was great for the world. You know, that's what they thought, but they did not, they could not have accounted for some of the negative ways that their creations would eventually impact the world. And I think that the disease of comparison is one of those ways that their creations have impacted the world negatively. Um, I've mentioned this before on this channel, just to kind of speak on my own personal mental health journeys. I realized a long time ago that my personal mental makeup isn't strong enough to be constantly inundated with images and videos and messages online and on social media and for me to be able to remain above the fray on all of that. Maybe a stronger person than me can take that. Me personally, I can't take that. So I realize the longer I spend, the more time I spend on Instagram looking at women I can't date, the lo- the more time I spend on Instagram looking at what other people are doing and the trips that they're taking and the cars that they're buying or the houses that they're living in, the longer I spend on YouTube and Instagram watching Kevin Samuels videos, the the more I started to dislike myself. So I realized the only way for me to feel better about myself is to unfollow all that stuff and to not look at it, and to not consume it as much. So, like, I purge myself of all of it, and I feel better about myself ever since. Like, I'm a happier person. I'm literally less depressed because I am not seeing a bunch of half-naked women with with big butts and tiny waists flood my feeds all the time. And I'm not on YouTube always looking at these red pill podcasts And back in the day when Kevin Samuels was still doing his thing, watching these Kevin Samuels videos, listening to women talk about how they can't date a man if he doesn't make six figures a year. So, like, I personally had to 
position myself to not consume so much of that because it was deteriorating my mental health. I was inevitably comparing myself to other people who were in those positions. Mm -hmm. So whenever I was on Instagram seeing these posts and I was looking at people I went to elementary school with or middle school with or whatever, and they're doing their thing and they're traveling and they're making all this money. I was saying to myself, I am failing at life because I'm not doing that. And they are when I was seeing the women hop on these podcasts, being all toxic, talking about how they can't talk to a guy if he doesn't make $100,000 or more or is in at least six foot four inches tall. I was comparing myself to men who do make that much money and who are that tall. And And as a result, I was hating myself in the process because there's really nothing wrong with me. I'm fly as hell. So what I had to do, so what I, so what I had to do was turn that shit off because it was a it was compromising my mental health. The reason why I'm even bringing this up is because I feel as though there are millions, if not billions of other people mm-hmm. speaking to your point about how there's a lot of people who you talk to and you interact with and their mental health state is in a state of decline and you wouldn't even know it. I believe that there are millions, if not billions of other people who live in this shell on a daily basis, constantly consuming themselves with these types of messages that lead to their own self-destructive thoughts. Yes. And they don't have the wherewithal to get away from it. They think they need to keep being on Instagram all the time. They need to keep being on TikTok all the time. They need to be on Facebook all the time. Like they feel like they need to be on these platforms or else they're missing out. Mm -hmm. So they feel like they need to stay on Instagram and follow this Instagram model and follow this fitness influencer and follow all of these people. They feel like they have to look at these podcasts. They feel like they got to look at Fresh and Fit. Like there's men out there who feel like they need to be up on game. And how can I stay up on game? By watching Fresh and Fit. <laughs> but what happens during those two hours that you're watching their live stream? You're seeing all of these chicks that you think you want to date talk about how they need to be with a man who does all the things that you're not. And in the process, how does that make you feel about yourself? If you're being completely honest, it's not making you feel very good about yourself. So if you're going to live in the matrix where you're constantly consuming this stuff all the time, sir or ma'am, I suggest you go to therapy. I suggest you go. I suggest you counterbalance your consumption of these toxic messages with professional help. And my personal speculation anecdotally is I feel like there are billions of people out there living like this every day. And, and, and they, a lot of them are younger people who are growing up with it. So they don't even know that they're compromising their mental state by doing it. It, It's become so, it's so ubiquitous and it's such, it's been a part of their reality for so long that they don't even know that what they're doing is goofy. Mm -hmm. They don't even know. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we just did a video last week talking about the doctor who broke it down scientifically. Mm Mm-hmm how people are externalizing their self-worth and how that's leading to their own self-destructive thoughts. Yep. So you don't have to take our word for it. You can look at, listen to people like him and, 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 and and consuming this stuff so often leads to people developing their narcissistic tendencies and narcissistic personality disorder is an actual disorder in the DSM five to reference Mm -hmm. the DSM. So Mm -hmm. like this stuff is happening and these two guys If their words serve any purpose, it is to the slew, the litany of people out there who worship the ground that these rappers walk on. (laughs) And maybe they feel as though if a rapper says it, it's okay for me to do it. So maybe some of these people who love these rappers and these entertainers so much, if they're talking about how they sought professional help to help manage and cope with and deal with their deteriorating mental state, then maybe they'll do it too. Because speaking of FAMU, I spent the semester at FAMU. And uh, shouts out to Dr. Valerie White. I'll never forget this lady. She was, yeah. one of, she was one of my journalism professors when I co-opted between FSU and FAMU doing journalism courses. And one of the things that she said to me was, there are so many people 
walking around operating in society who shouldn't be, and you'll never know it. And she put it very succinctly, but it was profound the way she put it. There are a lot of unhinged people operating in society every day. Yep. And a lot of these people operating in society every day, my concern is there wasn't some inciting event or some overwhelming trauma that caused their mental status to deteriorate. They engage in self-destructive behaviors and habits every day that Correct. leads to a gradual decline in their mental status. Yes. They're on Instagram three hours a day. They're on TikTok two hours a day. They're on, and I know I'm sounding like the old guy blaming social media for the world's problems. Hey, listen, everything's in moderation, but you cannot sit here and deny the unintended consequences of some of these applications. Mm -hmm. It's messed up a lot of people. Yeah. It has, myself included. And I'm the guy gas bagging on a microphone. But I had to learn how to get away from this stuff because it was messing me up. So it ain't a man, woman thing, a race thing. It's an everybody thing. Um, you know, uh, if, if you insist on continuing to remain plugged in, then I would highly advise, as Method Man did and as Fat Joe did for two years, to seek out that professional help. You might not think you need it. Because you think you're good and you're not thinking about unaliving yourself or you're not thinking about running up in a school or you're not thinking about doing any of the crazy stuff that you see on the news every day. But that doesn't mean that you're not in a that it doesn't mean that you're not in a compromised state. Um, you just don't realize it because the world around you has told you since the time that you were able to think that you need to be on all this stuff all the time. But trust me, if you're on all this stuff all the time, you're amongst those who are probably in need of sitting on somebody's couch and having a conversation. Hey man, well said, bro. And, um, you know, and Fat Joe and uh, Method Man, they're in a different generation. They're in, they're in a generation that's, uh, you know, older than ours. And um, so one would say that they spend less hours probably uh, on these devices than these uh, younger people that you mentioned. But um, still, man, um, what I think for sure, because your point is well taken, and I think that social media has accelerated uh, this this monster and normalized a lot of these crazy ways that people are thinking. And so it gave these younger people a pass to do the dumb stuff that they're seeing. And the older people that are, you know, just partaking in this or so happens or whatever uh you know they were still victims of their own forms of mind control and other things and just regular everyday trauma growing up all right because everybody grew up in this capitalistic world where you know everybody's getting dunked on in one way or another and they can't see it and so uh method man they, they come from a different generation and um you know so i you know, the younger people are talking more about mental health now. You know, these athletes and, you know, the, they'll talk about their mental health and they don't want to play because of their mental health. And they get clowned for it. But it's like, hey, man, he ain't right. Zion don't feel like Zion today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they get clowned for it. But, you know, these younger people, you know, I, I see, you know, they are more inclined to to speak up now because you know mental health is like a thing it's like just mental health is a buzzword so um i think that this is a you know cross generational thing but i i do i do agree with you that it has accelerated you know for the young people that just grew up on this you know they don't know a world outside of social media and social media is a cesspool of comparison and narcissism and all type of crazy stuff you know it's every vice you need is on the internet so, um, and, uh, yeah. And wise words from the woman that you said, man, uh, that those people are driving in traffic. Those are the people that cut you off in traffic. You know, that's that rude cashier you dealt with, you know, that's everybody. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, last week I was telling, you know, uh, I was saying that more or less that, you know, these things come off as they test you, these people test you out here, but these people that's testing you are some hurt people, man. These people went through stuff. And if you heard their story, you would know why they acting like that now. So it's not to give everybody a pass. 
it's just to know that, hey, man, it's some wild people in the world that done went through some wild stuff and they ain't nowhere close to getting help. So, um, you know, for you and yours, you know, if you're going through something, you ain't the only one, man. There's a lot of people out here putting up a, a good front in life and acting like they don't go through no dark times, you know. Yeah. And that's why that's why I was shocked that, uh, you know, two guys that, you know, on a microphone, you know, you wouldn't think you wouldn't think that these guys had a bad day ever. And uh, but for them to say, hey, man, I, I went through it myself. Uh, like you said, for these people out here that do do this, this worship out here, man, and one way or another, it could be your favorite athlete. For them to say, hey, man, I had those moments and um, I went and got help and y'all should get help, too. Uh, you know, don't go through this alone because, uh, yeah, it don't have to be to the point to where unalivens a thing, but it could definitely be to the point where, you know, now you're eating stuff you ain't supposed to be eating, smoking. Something yeah, it, it shouldn't. Eating. Yeah, it shouldn't get to that point. Is the right. Thing. Yeah, like, there's gradual stages of it. And just because you don't reach that extreme point doesn't mean that you're not suffering. Exactly. So like people need to recognize that, but I just kind of feel like people don't even realize that there is suffering that's taking place. Right. You know, it's a, it's, it's a crazy thing, but I really do think that like most people don't even know that they are suffering because it's like that it, it, they've accepted that as the baseline form of existence to constantly wake up and be on these devices and engage in comparison and contrast every day. Like that is the world that we live in. So just accept it. And you don't have to accept that, but just know that if you do accept it, um, your status is deteriorating. Um, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that all the time. That's an unhealthy habit. Hey, what, what Pastor so, DDG said, man, uh, if you ain't as lit as the next person, if you yeah, yeah. got more money than the next person, <laughs> you ain't popping. Yeah, man. That's 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 that crazy stuff, man. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Yeah, man. Yeah. So just, just watch yourselves out here, y'all. And um, you know, don't be afraid to talk somebody if they if they out your budget, it's all good, man. But just like how Method Man said, you know, you know, there was parts of him that said, Man, I wonder how so and so so and so is doing. And he just didn't have it in him to pick up the phone and call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've been in those situations too where you know what I'm saying? I wonder how XYZ was doing. I ain't even text him. You know, you just send a text, bro. And, um, and uh, you know, I'll get into those funks. So uh, if there's somebody out there that, that you could talk to, lean on a little bit, you know, not dump all your trash on. <laughs> all right. But somebody you can lean on, somebody that can brighten your day, man. It really helps, man. And, uh, you know, get help any way you can. And be more communal and less in these isolation boxes, which these phones, devices, video games, and everything else seem to be doing to people. So, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the greatest irony of social media and the internet is that they were applications that fostered communication, but in the process of foster, com fostering communication, they've made people more insular and impersonal. Yep. Um, so that's, that's the, that's the tremendous irony inherent in, all forms of social media. I don't care which one you spotlight. They're all like that. Uh, they've just made people impersonal in general. Um, and I want to do take, I want to take one thing back. I said, um, you know, older generations are more likely than not to seek out professional help as opposed to like younger generations who are more likely to use the internet and social media as their therapist. I want to retract that. Everyone does that. That's yeah. not really an age thing. Everybody's out here doing that. So I want to go ahead and take that. <laughs> yeah, bro. I thought about I thought about that. It ain't it ain't young people or old people exclusively that's doing it. Everybody's doing that. If you're on the internet and you got a username, yeah. <laughs> you probably you probably out here wild. Hey man. Yeah. Don't don't, yeah. don't dig up my comments from 2013, y'all. Please don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. No, there's you, you, there's gonna be less of a bread a bread cr a, a, a bread crumb trail for me on that because I, I never made it to, I never made it to the point where I was commenting, but I definitely had my phase, man. I, I had my that. phase. I was following, I was following all of the lit IG models uh, several years ago. So Amen. I am so very good. glad that I purged that out of my system. It's all good, but dog, we all did. It. <laughs> <laughs> 